We're looking for reishi mushrooms, which are a highly medicinal, sought after mushroom. They're also one of the most beautiful mushrooms, in my opinion. The depictions of the reishi are the oldest of any fungus in Chinese history, all the way back to the first emperor of China. Um, and it's been associated with immortality, uh, vitality, wisdom, health for thousands and thousands of years. Here's some. They're growing out of this dead hemlock tree. There's a lot of dead hemlock trees around here, which is kind of nice for the rishis. You can see there's tons of them growing out of this tree. So you want to harvest rishis that are at the end of their life cycle, that are mature, preferably ones that have already dropped their spores. And you can tell that uh, a couple of different ways. I'll grab this one here. We'll cut it with a knife at the base. This one's ready to go. You can kind of tell uh, by looking at this white edge. When the mushrooms are mature, that's going to be really small or gone altogether. Um, and you can tell also when a, a group of rishis is mature by looking at the backs of the ones around it. So you can kind of see this brown powder. Uh, that's actually the spores. So the, the rishi, the mushroom above this one, already dropped its spores, which means it has completed its life cycle. Um, it doesn't have any more work to do, so you can take it home and use it for whatever you want to use it for. So that's different from this one. You can kind of see the white edge is a lot bigger, and that means it's still growing. So you could let it get even bigger if you wanted to harvest it um, and wait for it to drop its spores. There's no known lookalikes for a reishi mushroom. Uh, there's plenty of Ganoderma species, uh, so there may be um, others that are not the hemlock variety that look like this or that look similar to this, um, but these are, it's not easy to confuse these with anything else growing around here. Um, and they're really just perfect. They're so beautiful. It's a, a cancer fighting mushroom, so it actually activates your immune system um, stimulates your T cells. In certain doses, it's anti-inflammatory. And to get that, you actually wanna do the alcohol extraction. So, so it really does a lot. There's a lot of different things in here. It, I think it deserves its reputation. We got some amazing mushrooms yesterday, and today we're gonna use them to make reishi tea. The first thing you wanna do to do that is you want to break them into pretty small pieces. You want the most surface area that you can get. And there's a lot of different ways to do this. We're just gonna slice them up into strips um, and we're gonna boil them for a while. When you find wild reishi uh, that you wanna process yourself, it is best to do that uh, as soon as possible, within a day or two of picking them because they'll really start to harden up as they dry and they'll become almost impossible to break. You can break a coffee grinder trying to, to cut one of these things up. So we're gonna cut them as soon as we can. So if you're using dried, uh, you only need a little bit, about three ounces. Um, but if you're using fresh like this, we're gonna need a bit more, um, about 25 ounces. All right, now once we have the water in here, we're gonna put it on to the heat. You can do this on your stove top at home. Um, and we're gonna bring this all the way up to a boil. And once it's up to a boil, you wanna leave it for at least 30 minutes and as much as two hours. You can actually boil it for two hours. And then we'll just bring it over and strain it out. Some people like to add flavor. It has a really earthy taste. Um, so you could add ginger, orange peel, or honey um, in the last 10, 15 minutes of the cooking process. But we're just gonna go ahead and drink it straight today. Uh, so there you have it. Here's some reishi tea. Now I'm ready to live for another 10,000 years. <laughs>